Brothers and sisters, welcome to the sixth Sunday of Easter. Today we gather as a people of the resurrection. We are still trying to cope with the challenges in this new norm. And yet today, the Lord continues to promise us the power of the Holy Spirit to help us through our lives, through our difficulties and through our situation. Let us surrender all our inner desires our petitions into the hands of this Lord and ask Him to bless us so that we will continue to live as people of the resurrection, the people of hope. And so let us begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honour of the risen Lord and that what we relieve in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went to a Samaritan town and proclaimed the Christ to them. The people united in welcoming the message Philip preached, either because they had heard of the miracles he worked or because they saw them for themselves. There were, for example, unclean spirits that came shrieking out of many who were possessed, and several paralytics and cripples were cured. As a result, there was great rejoicing in that town. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, and they went down there and prayed for the Samaritans to receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet he had not come down on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Peter. Reverence the Lord Christ in your hearts, and always have your answer ready for people who ask you the reason for the hope that you all have. But give it with courtesy and respect, and with a clear conscience, so that those who slander you when you are living a good life in Christ may be proved wrong in the accusations that they bring. And if it is the will of God that you should suffer, it is better to suffer for doing right than for doing wrong. Why, Christ himself, innocent though he was, had died once for sins, died for the guilty, to lead us to God. In the body, he was put to death. In the spirit, he was raised to life. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
I shall ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to be with you forever, that Spirit of truth whom the world can never receive, since it neither sees or knows Him. Because you know Him, because He is with you, He is in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come back to you. In a short while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will understand that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Anybody who receives my commandments and keeps them will be one who loves me, and anyone who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and show myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the phrase, always have an answer ready when you're called upon to account for your hope, jumped up and caught my attention as I reflected on the readings for this weekend. This is a challenging phrase for me as it calls me to become accountable for my actions and, a, and become a beacon of hope for others. The truth is that I will not be able to live my life fully as Christ's disciples without the presence of the Holy Spirit. Here, we can draw comfort that the Holy Spirit will accompany us on this faith journey and not leave us as orphans. The obvious reality is that we are all facing a similar and challenging situation in this COVID-19 pandemic here in Singapore and throughout the whole world. Question. Do I experience a sense of hope in my heart at this point of time and in turn share this hope with my neighbour? Or do I feel sucked into this whirlpool of negativity and therefore have gradually become lethargic, numb, indifferent and hopeless? In the Gospel, Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit or the Helper who will help and strengthen His disciples in their mission to spread the good news and build the kingdom of God. Jesus was aware that the disciples will become lost, devastated, disillusioned and afraid after the Good Friday tragedy and therefore needed the presence of the Holy Spirit to help them rise above their despair, fear and apathy. And amazingly, their lives radically changed with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. We hear Philip in the first reading, who went to Samaria to preach the good news of the resurrection and performed miracles among the people. As God's chosen people, the Jews were given the mission to become light for the nations, but became inward-looking or insular over time and did not fulfill the mission given to them. The fact is, the Jewish people always felt favoured in God's eyes as a chosen race and despised the other like the Samaritans and pagans because this group of people was seen as defiled, unclean and impure. What is quite obvious here is that while the Jews failed to fulfil their mission as a chosen people, but now the Christians, empowered by the Holy Spirit, will continue God's mission as light for the nations, for others. After the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Christians will move out of Jerusalem to evangelize the good news to others, as in the case of Philip, who went to Samaria. Question, in what ways have I evangelized and witnessed the good news as a missionary disciple? The newness here is that the love joy and hope of the risen Lord is going beyond all human expectations and barriers in order to bring about hope, reconciliation and peace among the Jews, pagans and Samaritans. As such, everyone is now seen as God's beloved, simply put, made in the image and likeness of God. And every person has now assessed to the gift of the Holy Spirit, and more importantly, the gift of eternal life. 
Saint Damien of Molokai was a member of the Congregation of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary and felt this call to become a missionary. The opportunity came when his brother who joined the congregation much earlier was unable to go to Molokai because he fell ill and so Damien replaced him. The background to the island of Molokai was that since leprosy or in a scientific term known as Hansen's disease was highly contagious and untreatable at that time and therefore the Hawaiian government ruthlessly hunted down and quarantined, I think this word has become familiar to us, quarantined lepers on that particular island. When Damien arrived at Molokai, he had to start from ground zero because the people were living a life of messiness and moral debauchery. In short, there was no law and order on that island. Despite being in a very depressing and hopeless situation, Damien here chose to be Christ's hope and light for the people who just waited to waste away and die from the dreaded disease. During his time, Damien gave confidence to the community and uplifted their spirits in the way he cared for lepers and also established leadership within the community to improve the state of living. He became the new breath to these people living in a state of hopelessness. The other thing that most surprised the lepers was that Damien touched them, such when he bandaged their wounds and ate together with them, unlike the other missionaries and doctors who shrank at the sight of these disfigured lepers. Damien too had a special devotion to the Eucharist, and it is through the Eucharist he found the strength to carry out this extremely difficult mission among the lepers for 16 years. In his beatification, St. John Paul II said, What could he have offered to the leper if not his own faith and this truth that Christ is Lord and that God is love? He became a leper for the lepers and died like them, believing that he would rise again in Christ for Christ is the Lord. Damien to me became the beacon of hope for the lepers and became the presence of Christ that is his heart, hands, feet and mouth to a people regarded as outcasts and rejects by society. My dear people, as we look forward to the Feast of Pentecost, we are reminded again by the Church that the Holy Spirit or Advocate or even Helper is given to each one of us to continue the mission of Christ and to establish God's kingdom by using our unique gifts and talents. When we are truly connected with the Holy Spirit, I believe, I strongly believe, we can go beyond ourselves and do what seems difficult and impossible according to our human logic. And we have the stories of Damien and the many saints that will continue to motivate and challenge us to go beyond ourselves and make that difference wherever we are. The current COVID-19 pandemic has in a way forced us to think out of the box and be creative because what seemed normal and viable for us previously is no longer relevant today. Let us therefore allow the Holy Spirit today to empower shape and mould us so as to make sense of our situation and be relevant as Christ's disciples for others and especially in these most challenging times. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us renew our baptismal promises by professing the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for salvation. He came down from heaven, 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As sisters and brothers of the risen Lord, we come to our Father with our concerns, especially in this present COVID-19 pandemic. That the servants of the servants of God be guided by the Holy Spirit in all their decisions let us pray to the Lord. That nations and communities ensure fair taxes and attend to the needs of the neediest. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who suffer find the joy of the risen Lord, which no one can take, take away from them. Let us pray to the Lord. That the sick be restored to health, especially in this current situation, and that the dying be welcome in God's heavenly city. Let us pray to the Lord. That our community of faith seek new ways to recall and honour those who have given their lives in service of this community and country. Let us pray to the Lord. In a special way, we pray for all our personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. In the power of the Advocate we have come, God of all nations, with these prayers, we ask you to answer them according to the needs of all. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever please our cause before you. 
He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down a spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the clergy and your holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My brothers and sisters, 
let us extend this peace of Christ to one another. Peace be with Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restores to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessing. Amen. May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with Him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. People of God, see the morning is new. Rise from your sleeping and run to the tomb. Come and see, come and see, He is alive. A prayer that is empty, a promise fulfilled. God who is with us is here with us still. He is here, He is here, He is alive. Hallelujah, love is alive, conquer the grave.